Now, we've discussed a lot about 3D Coat, and we've now gone into the voxel room and, and gone in depth uh, enough to give you get your feet wet as far as importing models into the voxel room, exporting them from the mo uh, voxel room in and out of 3D Coat, as well as how to put primitives on the scene. But I think it's important also to kind of cover, at least in general, what the tools and brushes do, or at least what they, uh, you know, where to find them and, and get a sense of how to, how to use most of um, <clears throat> the user interface to help you figure these things out. Now, on the left-hand side, we have the brushes. These are our voxel brushes. Now, if I go to uh, surface mode, you'll see that it, on the left-hand side, it goes from voxel to surface, and I have surface brushes here instead of the voxel brushes. If I click on this S over here in the layer, it goes back to the voxel brushes. Now, if for some reason your panel on the left doesn't look the same, and I've gone over this before, but I want to do it again, is you can change the user interface um, on this side to by clicking on this T with a box beside it. And just keep clicking it until you get to uh, what you prefer to use. Now, initially I started using these because I didn't recognize any of the tools and what they looked like, but after a while I got used to uh, something more like this, which really helped me uh, gauge what I'm doing and how to do it. So uh, as I've gotten more advanced, and you will too, you may decide to go one direction or another. Uh, but essentially, I like uh, this look here. And so I just clicked on that as many times as I needed to to get to it. The other thing that you can do is you can actually use that little arrow to hide the panel or middle, you know, grab this little dot in the middle down here on the left. Oops, um, and you can actually pull it back out. And as you may have just noticed, I can actually take these categories of tools and brushes and actually um, just shrink them down or open them up to use what I need to. And like I said, this interface is so customizable. You can you can hide tools, you can add tools. It doesn't, you know, there's just about, I didn't want to say almost limitless ways that you can tailor this to your needs. In fact, I've seen people with tools on the bottom, and, and you can, you know, essentially do that. You can you can uh, go to your Windows pop-ups and, let's say, brushes. And if for some reason your brushes tab, well, this would be the brushes down here, but essentially that would be your brushes tab, and you can pull these up and arrange those as you see fit as well. So I'm going to put these back in this menu. Um, and then slide them over to the left, or actually I just wanted them in the menu, but to the left, so maybe what I need to do here is that. Um, but essentially what happens is, if you don't like a particular layout, like I said, you can go into the preferences and reset your user interface. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put my brushes over here, and um, so this particular tool is called the airbrush, or the build tool, or the extrude tool. Um, airbrush just it implies that you're going to spray on um, a particular texture, um, etc., and then build does what it says and extrude does what it says. So if you float over these, you'll get the help, but also it gives you an idea of what it will look like in a preview if it's applicable or available. But also keep in mind that you can tailor these brushes or tools, I should say, to meet your needs even further. So let's say I zoom in by right clicking and dragging my mouse forward a little bit and I'm going to use the grow tool now you'll notice that it defaulted to this um, in this case or in my case uh, adjustable square and that's not what I wanted so I'm going to go to the E panel which is either this icon right up here or I can press the E key and go to a, a paintbrush and essentially what I can do let me just increase my strength here I can paint inside this uh, sphere but let me increase the resolution of the sphere so it looks a little less jaggy and a little more smooth. Um, and so as I do this sculpt, you'll see that I get different effects if I choose that setting of brushes versus this one that has less of a fall off. It's a lot harder, um, so you're going to see a, a much less gradual adjustment, or I should say transition, from the original surface that you're sculpting on and what you've sculpted. Uh, but you can also use something like this, which is the chain. And, you know, depending upon what it is, it may be more effective or less effective, depending on the tool you've chosen. So let's say we use airbrush, and I, I brush that in. You'll see that I actually have a chain being painted in. Uh, so let me turn it down a little bit, and I can paint this in. Same thing with, like, zippers or whatever the, the shape is. And, in fact, 
you're not limited to what is provided with 3D code. There's a lot here, right? But you can click on new and open your own texture file or create one using curves. So you can literally, if you wanted something that had a gradual fall off uh, from down here to up here, but then you wanted it to come down and then up again, you could do that. And then you'll see a preview of that adjustment there. And then when you paint, you've got something that is that gradual fall off and then it goes down again after it loops up and then goes up again. So you can play with these and, and, and do what you need to. And if you right click, you can edit the curve. Uh, you can go into brush settings, which is the options tab over here. And essentially you can adjust uh, various things like random flipping, uh, painting with dabs, which gives it sort of a spotted look. You can rotate it along the stroke. So let's say I wanted to do that, then I could have it do that. So let's let's go back to our, our um, original uh, fancy uh, option here with the chain. Now, if I do this, it should twist with my stroke. Now, some of these don't seem to work as well as others, but in this case, I need to go back and say rotate along stroke, and you'll see that I am actually able to do just that. So it all depends, um, but there are also presets. So you can set up presets in terms of the brush, that you're using, the type of strength it has, the curvature, what, what e-panel tool it's using, and save these as presets and just grab them and use them as you need to. Um, these strips are very similar. So let's say I want to paint a, a, a zipper on uh, using a, a soft brush. I should be able to do that. And I can actually size my brush down and do that, that as well. If I go and, and say rotate along stroke, it'll look a lot better. Uh, so you can, and again, you can take these strips, add a new strip. Just It's basically an image file. Um, and you can see you've got, you know, Targa, uh, BMP, PNG, JPG. You've got all kinds of different formats that you can use to, to bring in. Uh, the same thing to a degree with these models. You actually have uh, different models that you can set up as... Uh, essentially like primitives and bring them into the scene and then hit enter and they'll be there. So let's say that you're used to sculpting characters and you have a hand that you've already sculpted. It's a difficult part of the body to sculpt and so you've got it where you want it. You literally can, can save uh, something like that into this by using this new box and bringing it in and then pulling it in as a primitive. So you don't have to import them all the time. You can have them sitting there ready. Um, let me back out of that one for a second just so I can start with a fresh clean slate. And um, the other thing I want to point out is that you have different adjustment tools here. So you can use the move tool, for instance. It works like uh, the one in ZBrush where you can stretch things out and move them around or push them down, etc. Um, and so you can have um, a different fall off strength, etc. Um, you also have this pose tool which will be useful if you have, uh, say we, we had a limb coming out, like an arm, you could take this pose tool and draw out um, this uh, gizmo, if you will, and you can use these buttons to scale. You can click on this green bar here, and uh, then it'll turn into a rotation. Uh, and then if you click on it again, you can use it for, I'm sorry, that scale, this is move, and this is rotate and then this would be like a twist. So you can do different things, and then when you're ready to commit, you hit enter again. If you, if you didn't want to commit, you would just, you would just uh, go to another tool, and it should go back to where it was, or if for some reason, it, let's see, let me test that actually. So let's say I move that, and then I go to a different tool. Okay, so it does commit it as you go. Um, so the common tools I typically use, and the common brushes I typically use uh, for a lot of my products are Carve, uh, with it inversed so that I can um, take out parts of shapes and and uh, so in other words I can use this carve tool now the carve has never worked like it was intended to from what I understand but let's say I go to the E panel and by pressing E and use this non-uniform box now I'll make sure that ignore back faces is unchecked so that I will get cut through the entire model and not just the front area of it and so if I hold down control while I draw this box, it actually cuts off a piece. Now you can just use the cutoff to do that. So that's why the carve tool, I don't think was ever intended to do exactly that. 
uh, and, and for instance, if I don't hold down control, in other words, I don't give it an inverse, this is what happens. It draws like a, a little plane in the shape of whatever I had done. So, um, but sometimes I'll use that just to cut out things. But of course, you, again, you can use the cutoff tool. I use the airbrush to get good details, and you've already seen me use that one. Build and extrude are also very useful. So if I want to build something up, I can literally just say draw box, or let's say I want to go to, um, uh, let's do freehand, um, just freehand something and get that shape, I can do that. Um, I can use extrude and it's very similar. Um, so I can, I mean, it looks a little bit like build, but it extrudes along what would be perceived as the normal um, for um, this, this shape if it were a polygonal shape. So let me back out of this for a second. I don't want this little stem hanging off. And um, uh, sphere is, it almost like, it's hard to explain. It sort of draws in the shape of a sphere off the surface. But let's say you wanted to um, use a spline curve and just literally click, click, click. I'm using the left mouse button and uh, and I don't, you know, I can, at this point I can say um, edit points and I can use these little highlighted dots when I get a cursor, when I highlight my cursor, I get this circle around it, which means I can grab it and move it around. But I can literally click on that dot uh, right click on that dot and it'll change it from a bezier to a smooth bezier to a hard sur uh, hard curve. Uh, it's not even a curve, it's more like a corner, I'm sorry. Um, so you can you can adjust shapes like that and then hit enter and you'll get a shape with that tool using that spline. And you literally, if you hold down, if you're using the newer versions of 3D code, I think it's past 4.0, um, you can hold down your spacebar and move that curve around. You can even go into this uh, little arrow right here and flip it horizontally. And, and so there's a lot of things you can do with this. It's a very powerful feature. That ePanel, you'll, you'll start to realize why it's important to use it. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is this ignore back faces. So uh, in other words, if, and, and I don't think the Carve Tool is really the best one to use uh, for this, but let's say I'm going to build, um, build something on this sphere. So let me grow, use a grow tool. I'll go with the um, a regular paint brush. I'll choose a different uh, brush pattern, if you will. And um, I'm going to not ignore back, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm going to ignore back faces, which means anything I do over here uh, shouldn't affect, in fact, let, let me, the build tool is probably the better one to use. Um, so if I ignore back faces, and let's say I do this, if I rotate that, you see it only affected what I was able to see. If I uncheck that and draw that curve, you'll see that it goes all the way around. Now granted, it's at a slant because I need to go into a different mode. Now I'm in perspective mode because, and I know this because when I turn the grid on, my lines go from wider to more narrow as they go away. If I go to orthographic mode, however, and do this, and say go from average normal to vertex normal, meaning that it will stretch and grow or depress or whatever based on the directions of the normals or the, uh, in this case, the voxels, then it'll go in an even pattern all the way around. So you can, you can uh, even inverse that by holding down control or if you're on a Mac, your option key and recede or depress an area. And if for some reason you need more strength, you can do that as well. So you can start pulling out like interesting shapes by doing this. Um, if you press your S key, you'll get symmetry. So you can go with symmetry across the X axis, the Y axis or the Z axis. But keep in mind that there isn't currently a way and you can see my version up here is 4.0.04b. Um, and that's, of course, for the Windows side. But right now, anyway, there is no um, way to select multiple axes at the same time and get uh, more than one thing happening on one side and the other at the same time. You, I mean, you can. You can do it here and here, but you only across that one plane. If you, if you wanted to do it in a radial pattern, that requires uh, a radial uh, tool and it's uh, for me anyway pretty tricky to use. I, I don't use it really much at all. Uh, in fact that one might be in surface mode. Uh, so let me go to surface mode because I know there is one. Um, there is a radial tool 
And I don't see it right off the bat, but I know there is one. The bottom line is, um, as you're going through this, the point is, if you want to use symmetry, you need to press the S key and turn on your symmetry plane. But oftentimes you can also go into these menus at the top, like the symmetry menu, and just do it that way. And you can turn it off. You can also show the symmetry, symmetry plane or hide it. So let's say I want the symmetry plane on so that what happens on one side happens on the other. But if I actually don't want to see the plane in my way, I may have to like move the screen just a bit, then I can do it this way. And the plane still it operates without me seeing it. Um, and there are ways to move these planes around, etc. But the bottom line is those are, in general, the um, major things that you can do. There's my, it's not radial, it's called axial, but essentially it's creating instances of um, whatever you're doing and, and using axial symmetry. But I, you know, some people find it easy to use. I don't necessarily. Um, but the tools that I tend to use the most are going to be grow, uh, airbrush, build, extrude, sometimes sphere, um, clay on occasion. Fill is useful also uh, because let's say I want to fill uh, just this area here where I've got this sort of indentation. I can do that. And it'll it'll try do its best to fill that up, um, so that can be useful. Um, the pose tool is useful. The transform tool tool I use a lot, and that's of course just to rotate scale and and translate or move uh, the object. Um, down here under objects, I tend to use uh, cut and clone, clone or split, depending on what I want to do. And you can read up on those as you see in the the. Um, uh, program when you hit those. If you have questions, certainly ask. A, and, and if I can't answer them, I guarantee the community can. Um, but there's lots of different things. Vox layer is good. Uh, if you want to, say, um, uh, paint an area that, in fact, let me undo that for a second. If you want to paint an area that you want to be, uh, say, fabric. Um, so let me make my brush a little smaller. Um, I can, let's say I'm making a pocket or something, uh, and this is going to be really cheesy, but if I hit enter, it creates a, a um, it's another uh, model on a separate layer uh, that I can then use to, um, say, add a material to or whatever. That can become my leather pocket or whatever the heck it is. I, it doesn't matter. The point is, is you get the gist. Um, as far as logos, you can add in, like, Literally, you can put in logo uh, information, image information, and, and sculpt that in, basically um, not painting, but you can paint them in uh, in the paint room, and I guess technically in this room as well. But um, sketch, um, curves, snakes, spikes, toothpaste. Most of these I don't use except for on occasion I'll use curves. Curves is a little tricky uh, because you want to, like if you want to use it, you can click and then click and then click and then click. And you can size these little balls down by right-clicking and, and uh, dragging up and down. Um, you can translate them if you want to hit the W key. Now, notice over here I have a, a pop-up menu. It says Extrude, Rotate, Scale. So if I want to extrude, I can just click another one out here or potentially put one in the middle. But if I want to move, then I either hit the W key or, um, or just click on that, and then I can move these around. Um, and then there's a way to adjust the scale of the, the line that it makes, etc. Uh, so there's lots of different things that you can do with this. Toothpaste is another one. Oh, and if you want to commit that curve, you just hit hit apply or hit enter, and it'll 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 do it. Um, toothpaste is also interesting. There are times when I'll use this. It's a little tricky at times. Uh, in fact, I'm going to increase my resolution a little bit. And if I paint that in there, you'll see I got a nice, pretty flat line. And sometimes that's useful. Uh, let's say you're going to you know, put a line down here and then go into your, um, uh, let's go to strips and get the zipper and the airbrush and then make my uh, curvature, I mean, uh, brush smaller and increase the, the strength of it. Then I can have something, if I had enough resolution in here, I could have something uh, like a um, zipper going down a... Um, a seam, if you will. Uh, the other thing I use, uh, obviously, is primitives. Muscle's okay. I don't use it very often, honestly. It's a little hard to control, but it also works in a lot of ways, like the one in ZBrush. Um, 
but it's, I don't know, it's, I don't find it to be extremely useful. There are times also when I want to use text. And so you can type, a, um, you can type text. <laughs> it's putting it along that curve. That's interesting. Um, but if I want to, um, let's say I can delete curve. Okay. Let's say I want to put text here to here. And the word here is cookie because that's the last thing I use. But let's say I, I well, let's just put zipper. Um, then it will put that in there. And if I hit enter, it will it will make the word, uh, it should anyway, make the word zipper um, along that curve. In fact, let me move this curve out of here. Um, here, let's just delete the curve. And we'll go from here to here. Um, but there are ways to uh, cut into or add um, text to things. Um, so let's say you're making a gun and you want to give it a brand name. And so you want to etch it into the, the handle, then you can do that. Um, there are some surface tools in the voxel room that are relatively useful, but I don't usually do that. I usually just go to the surface mode. And in surface mode, uh, I use draw, pinch, uh, flatten, chisels okay, on occasion, clay, build up, fill. I use a lot of these. In fact, um, the ones I typically don't use is surface hide. You know, freeze is a good one. Freeze is like masking in ZBrush. And, and this is probably one of the biggest drawbacks to using 3D code. I don't think that the masking tools are very good in general. Uh, that having been said, there aren't many there. I mean, really, this is, you, you freeze this, right? And so if you want to sculpt around this area that you've frozen, then you can do so. Now, if you hit draw, and you and you do this, you can't you, know, you bring up everything except around where you froze it. So it works okay. It's just not great when, it, especially when it comes to the painting side of things. So I think that could mature a little bit. Um, tube clay is kind of like you know drawing tubes along your surface. And here's the snake clay. Uh, inflate is also very useful. So if I want to inflate details, uh, and inflate or or grow this area of my sculpt, but not damage most of the details in the middle, you know, there in my, or underneath my brush, I can do that. Whereas grow will do, or draw will, will do, um, <laughs> oddly enough, it's kind of making me a liar, but that's not, the draw is supposed to like bring it out. Oh, I take it back. I guess draw doesn't destroy this. It's a little bit different from ZBrush in that respect. See, like I said, I use, I spend most of my time in voxel mode uh, so if I hit the grow, it will destroy that, whereas I guess the draw does not. So that's interesting. I learned something new here as well. Uh, clean clay. Now, you'll run into situations where if you go into wireframe mode using your W key, um, you may see some, some oddities occur, um, and the clean clay can be useful when you've got areas that need more detail and other areas that don't need as much then it can add the resolution where it's necessary, not so much in others. Um, the wrinkle clay could be useful, especially if you're dealing with wrinkles on um, organic figures. Um, so let me back out of this for a second. All right, so um, let's see. Move. I have transform, uh, axial under this one, um, curves again. There's even a cloth system. I don't find it extremely useful at all. But it will uh, simulate cloth. It'll draw a plane out here, and you can run that simulation, and it'll drop it over. So let's say you had a table. You could do that uh, and have a tablecloth. But I find it rather limited. It doesn't work extremely well for my tastes. Uh, the other thing I tend to use very often is the smooth all, and it does exactly what it says. It smooths the entire uh, layer. So whatever's on that layer, it will try to smooth everything on it. And sometimes that's useful. So if I, I actually tied that to my Shift S key by pressing the end key and then pressing Shift S to define Shift S as the hotkey. So if I float over these, you'll see the end is dash define key hotkey at the bottom there. So that's all I've done there. And if I can smooth this as many times as I want. Now, if I start to lose details, like in, in facial details, this is not a great technique. So you want to use that smooth all when you're dealing with big shapes, not, not fine details, uh, and that kind of thing. So down at the bottom right here, um, we've also got other things that we can use with our, it's not so much with our brushes, but it helps us understand um, the, you know, kind of like the material with which you're going to 
uh, sculpt and then, uh, and it doesn't actually affect the sculpt, it just affects the way it looks. But then when you go to bake these details uh, from your high poly version, say to a lower poly version or whatever, it can help add gloss uh, into the bake or lighting information into the bake. And uh, so we'll cover that in the next video.